when we were dressed in hazmat suits and all, like uh, need to wear diapers, yeah, because it's quite an expensive clothing. You you cannot just keep changing. We 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 just had a you know a very uh, thin ray of hope, very thin. Like yeah, if if we do survive this all this, so it, it was that depressing. Things were quite in routine, and actually, I planned my trip because uh, we 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 had holidays for February, like for for the Spring Festival. So I actually planned my trip uh, on twenty second January, I guess, like where my halls were starting for a week. But somehow, by I, I guess I remember by twenty second, thing things got really like out of control, and somehow it rang that alarm, like yeah, it's something to be worried about, and it grows really fast, grows really fast. Since the day you have the first patient and like in, in the next 10 days, yeah, it could be in thousands, from, from one to thousands. And the good thing about China is when they got to know that these things are coming up, they handle it very beautifully. Uh, they, they just put things into entire, you know, uh, lockdown. They have very well managed like communities where they can restrict people from going out, uh, which, which is the need of time. All the pharmacies were controlled and they were not allowed to, to dispense paracetamol or any analgesics. Yeah, nothing for pain or fever. And they were even had to register if someone comes for the medicines for cough or cold. They need to take their ID to buy medicines. It's not like, okay, I go and buy whatever I want to buy. I still remember, like, uh, like because I uh, I spent my like more than 20 years in India itself, so so I know how things work over there. So it's kind of a big challenge for us because uh, all the time, like uh, even, even with my parents, I do have such things. I, I need to tell them, like, yeah, they're like well educated and all, but yeah, for for them, meet, meeting relatives is something which they think, yeah, it, it's yeah, they will be like, yeah. We are not infected, they are not infected. That's true, but you cannot guarantee for how long. Even, uh, you know, when people wouldn't realize these things because they haven't seen things firsthand. But for all the medics and the paramedic staff over here, they have witnessed people and the bodies getting wrapped in plastic wraps and brought directly to the crematory. Nobody could e even do the last rituals for them. Yeah. So people haven't seen those things. The ones who have seen that, the ones who have dealt with them, they do know. And I mean, I, I don't even feel good recalling those moments. And I don't think like it's going to come up ever again, but they were really, yeah, really challenging. <laughs> The people on isolation and the people, the staff working in isolation wards, aren't supposed to go back home. They aren't. They should be provided food and the place to stay. Everything arranged in the hospital premise itself. Otherwise, isolation is ju just a game. Over here, starting from the person who sanitizes our rooms till the gatekeeper. They need to stay in the hospital. And we had our duties assigned like, okay, like 20 days, these people would be working. 
the, the teams were divided. Okay, so these particular days, 20 days, okay, you guys are going to work. After you finish working, you shouldn't go home. You got to stay here. Stay here. Okay, 20 days of duty finished. Now, followed by 14 quarantine days. So they're not meeting their families for more than a month. We should understand, like, even after hazmat suits and protective, uh, you know, clothing and PPE, as well as glasses and everything, even with that, there were casualties, 1,800 or more healthcare workers. So how do you guarantee, like, okay, after treating, even if you're putting on everything, how do you guarantee that you won't be transmitting the infection back to your family members once you go back home? Who is going to take the responsibility, like, on the way, if you're meeting, like, tens of people? How can you make sure that you are not transferring? Because you are just coming out from a cluster of infection. Not a shortage of manpower, I'd say. Yeah, people were like totally just just like working as in a, in a war zone. The people who were working, I mean, yeah, they, they didn't care about anything. When when we were dressed in hazmat suits and all, like uh, need to wear diapers, yeah, because it's quite an expensive clothing. You you cannot just keep changing. So let's say if your shift is for like eight or ten hours, yeah, you wouldn't be able to drink. You wouldn't be able to eat. You, you know, even at times, like, your, your nose would, would get depression because of the N95 masks. When you're wearing gloves for a long time, you're sanitizing your hands all the time. And when you're putting on a mask, so it leaves your hand dry and for, for that many number of hours, if, if you're putting on these kind of things. Mm -hmm. if, if you have to work that, this hard, these things are ought to happen. This is how we... we used to feel like, yeah, what if, if we could still survive? What if we live? What we, what are dreams unfulfilled? What should we do next? So th this is what we, we were thinking. We, we, we just had a, you know, a very uh, thin ray of hope, very thin. Like, yeah, if, if we do survive this, all this. So it was that depressing, even for a doctor who is like reading, going through all the generals, going through all the reports. Because, yeah, there was a point where, where, when we were like, yeah, okay, enough of this panicking thing, enough of this depressing situation. Yeah, just take it. Yeah, if everyone is dying, like we will die as well. Not to worry. That shouldn't stop us from working or from doing something. It's, it's quite different from India, because in India, we are hearing number of cases at times in like Nashik, at times in Pune, at times in Rajasthan, there are different clusters. So what happened over here was quite different. It was in Hubei, Wuhan province, uh, Hubei province in Wuhan. So all the resources for the entire country were relocated to Hubei. But in, if that happens in India, it's like opening a war on different fronts. We, we have a great example set in front of us, like how China controlled it. If we can control, we, we can do the same. So it's just about copying the same thing. But doing it like in an organized way is another challenge in India, definitely. <laughs>